Good people, let's go on a field trip. <laughs> I am on my way to take a look at this 320 watt Renergy solar panel. Um, I plan to try my best to test it with my EB120. I am not familiar with taking voltages from a, a clamp meter, but I can kind of figure out the voltage in some way. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be super accurate, but you know, um, I'll see if I can record while I'm there. The dude may not be okay with it. I may not be okay with it. Me being an introvert, I just kind of try and stay out the way. But I plan to plug it into the EB120 to see how many watts that it gets. And I also plan to see how many amps is coming through. And then I'm gonna divide the amps by the watts or whatever it is and hopefully get volts. I didn't even bring the connectors with me to be able to see what the, uh, what the voltage would be. I don't know how to do that stuff. It looks pretty easy, but I, I, I don't know which cable goes at which sometimes. I'm just, I'm kind of like a novice. And as I said before, if I haven't done something before, it might as well be trigonometry. I don't want to endeavor to do it. I especially don't want to endeavor to do it on site. Maybe the dude will have some type of device to kind of show it to me, we'll see. Now, I'm opting to get one panel because I don't think there's really like room in my setup for two. I can't even use two panels on my EB120. So I'm just gonna grab one. I hope I don't regret that. <laughs> As I mentioned uh, on the live, I, I really wanna be able to get one of these panels in hand and then maybe be able to try another like 400 watt panel at some point so that I can look at both of them and kind of have my input on which one I prefer to move, which one is more compact, is it worth it to go bigger for the more power. The dude agreed to do 250, so you know, we'll see how it goes. I have spent $200 on a 200 watt panel, so spending 250 on a 320, it's more ideal. <laughs> Now the ideal situation would be, my gosh, man, shut up. The super ideal situation would have been able to be to get a 400 watt panel for about 200 bucks, but you know, ain't none of those options on the table for me. So I gotta do what I gotta do. It's gonna be fun though, it's gonna be fun. Huh. What's your plans for it? Uh, I'm gonna hook it up to a, a little power station. Um, are you familiar with power station? So everything worked out okay. The dude had a voltmeter. I didn't want to record him personally because it just feels rude. Um, but it came out at about 40 volts, 9.57 amps. So that's it back there. Big monster back there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give y'all an update, another update in a second. I need to get on the road though. So I didn't bother with hooking up it to my EB120. I just felt like that wasn't worth it after he did the voltmeter or whatever. Um, I do feel like, <laughs> I could be wrong. I feel like I could have probably gotten two panels for 400, <sighs> but I didn't need two panels, you know what I mean? So why, you know, I don't know. But it felt I felt bad walking away from that situation with only one of these panels. <laughs> I did, I can't even use it, but I wanted it. So when I get it home, um, I'm on my lunch break right now. So <laughs> when I get it home, it, it's, it's gonna be on. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting more power. It may cause me to get in a situation where I may pull the 120 up to the top floor instead of the basement. I don't know. I don't know. Because nothing else can run my freezer, my deep freezer downstairs. That's the only thing that can do it. So I may have to keep it down there. But that gives me a little more room to charge up my power stations that can't be charged off of solar. And I could power dump directly into them from AC because I have two of those. I have the Oops that can't be charged from solar version one. And then I also have the Ocotel that I don't have a tip to be charged from solar. And I think it maxes out at 120 anyway. So I wouldn't want to throw that on a solar panel anyway. Now it's time to pull it out. <laughs> I guess I could take y'all along for the ride. I know I got the shade from the van dip up here, but that's what it looks like comparatively. 200 watts, 320 watts. That's not that bad comparatively, I guess. <laughs> It's, I guess it's, you know, it's only a third more capacity. So it makes sense that it's not that much bigger. 
Now I'm in here. I haven't reconfigured anything. So I just put it back on this panel. What's it getting? 167. And I'm dumping into here. Because as you can see, it has a pretty good charge. Right, so it'll probably get full. So I'm going to power dump into here at 125. And I also have this one dual power dumping into here. Probably not effectively, so it's almost full. So this one is going to be full soon too. It says 74%. So I'm going to have to put something else on here. I probably should just charge this one with that one <laughs> and not that one since this one has space to get full. This is going to be exciting when this thing is pulling in 250 watts. That's for sure. Because this thing barely uses any power. Pulling in about 250 watts, I could probably run this and this. No worries. And this 100 watt panel is actually hooked into version 2 of the OOPS. And it's charging okay. Some days it's good, some days it's not good. But it's doing okay. Let me give you all a walk around since I'm out here, right? This is the one that's actually on the EB120 now. That's the new panel. That's my EB70, which is full. How dare it be full? I was mad, man. I was like, man, this thing in here getting no power. I freaking plugged the old oops into it. Then I have this one not plugged into anything. <laughs> and this one is plugged into the Rock Pals. So I need to plug this into something. But actually... I guess I could plug the myelin into it. The myelin is not going to get the full voltage, but I might as well. I have to use an 8 millimeter to 5521 because this is an 8 millimeter cable that's going into the house. The jackery is full. And then I got this panel up here. I'm living uh, dangerously here because my wind blows through this way. But it's not a windy day today. So I usually put it right here and I leave it right here all day. As you can see, that's shaded. So when I pull it back here, I'll get some more from the sun that's right there. So that's what I'm looking at up there. I need to go to Home Depot and get some bungee cords for that, right? Oh, let me t show y'all what's going on in the front. Now you can see here that this thing is pulling in 93 watts. I have other panels, it's at 0%, so that's a factor. I have other panels situated in the same way, but pulling in 100 some odd watts. I don't understand what's going on here. It's dead. But look at this panel. This panel should be on Habib Marwan right now. But it's not. It's only pulling half the watts. I don't understand why. But this is my EcoFlow. My EcoFlow at the front of the house. Well, this is super inconvenient. Like, look at this. At 0%. Charging is acting like it's in a situation where it's full. I, I don't understand what's going on here. Look at this thing. It's at zero percent. Originally, what I had going on is I had the myelin here. It's plugged into my TV and my internet, which is kind of under there. I went out to get the panel, came back. This is at zero percent, but maintaining its charge, almost as if I can. I had set it to be at UPS mode and the max charge is at 0%, which you can't even do. The lowest you could go is 30%. Look at this freaking sun out here. And look at that panel. That panel is in, I mean, Habib Marwan daylight. And it's, it's well, I don't understand. So the inconvenient thing about this, it's not necessarily a, the biggest deal, but I have to come over here my internet is on here, so I'm going to have to turn this thing all the way off, which is going to kill my netta. And then I'm going to have to turn it back on to see if it does it. So let's just do that now. Real time, right? I may chop it up a little bit, but this is crazy. I guess I have to turn off the AC to do that. I may have to pull power out of it, too. So let me do that. Zero percent. Just pulled the solar out of it, and it's just sitting here. So let's turn it off. I'm not even gonna turn it back on. I'm just gonna plug the solar back into it and see what happens. This is why I don't like XT60. Ain't nothing quick about it. Solar's back in. Nothing's going on. I don't, okay, there we go. I was about to say, I don't feel like waiting, so I was gonna turn it on. Let's see what it does now. And now it seems to be behaving like a freaking power station should. 
Nope. I mean, it's at 0%, so I'm gonna cut it some slack, all right? Um, but in the meantime, I'm putting my internet on something else. Freaking bum. All right, I'll come back in a few minutes. No, going up to 73. All right, I shall monitor it. Now this is more like it. Back to normal, I had to power it on and back off for it to do this. 2% doesn't matter, it's still getting about 150 watts. That's what I need to see, man. EcoFlow, you've been warned. Shots fired. <laughs>